and now you are watching our um, signature segment, See the Stories. And today we have a special guest, which a Singaporean singer who just released his new album titled Gloomy uh, Boogie. His name is Benjamin Kang. Hello, Benjamin. How are you? Good afternoon. Noon, morning, rescue, wherever you're coming from, whatever time you're watching this. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, morning time here in um, in Jakarta, but I assume it is morning time as well over there, right? <laughs> morning, but it's night time in here. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. All right. So um, we want to talk about your new album, which this is very actually um, suitable for all of us who are not, you know, like um, not every day is happy day, right? And sometimes we're feeling uh, moody and like, you know, underwhelmed. So this album is actually perfect for that. That's what I heard. So can you tell us about that? <laughs> um, exactly what you said, Reski. Every single thing you said is correct. Uh, obviously, you know, I come from a pretty stressful country. Uh, there's a lot of pressure. Um, so we do keep a lot of our feelings hidden. Um, so this album is about, you know, me being honest with my feelings. Also at a party, I'm the kind of guy that I'll dance a lot first and then I'll end up very emotional at the end of the night um, and I end up maybe crying. So that's what I do. Um, and I think this album was a nice sort of look into how to be honest, especially in a, in a stressful situation or when you're not feeling your best. Yeah. All right but it's con congratulations because you know making an album is not as easy as it is right you have to go on through like um let's say 24 hours in the studio and then like you know do the um background checking and everything right so uh, what's the inspiration about your new album yeah um thank you i think the inspiration was um you know i've done music for a while but i haven't always been able to be fully honest with myself um, even in moments like this and I think I just felt like it was time to be very very honest in the lyrics I was writing and the stories I was telling and how I wanted to push this album so yeah it was it was like therapy for me in terms of being honest in terms of letting people know that you know it wasn't always smooth sailing um, for me mentally and just so that I can put my true thoughts into song I think that was important yeah could you highlight the standout tracks from your album? You know, um, as a as a parent of children, I can't pick a favorite child, otherwise they'll be angry. Uh, <laughs> but my favorite one from the album is a song called Break From The Party. Um, it was actually written because I needed to take a break from a party. I was at a work event and I was feeling really uh, tired socially. So I ran to a toilet just to be by myself and then I kind of wrote uh, the lyrics for this song. Uh, so I actually wrote it in the bathroom, this song. I think it was really cool that it turned out um, the way it was because it was kind of perfect. Wow, it's like um, you, you wrote it in the bathroom and you got a song, right? That's like, <laughs> it becomes a highlight. That's really bizarre. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering what was going on when they were listening in the toilet. <laughs> exactly, just like... Uh... Don't mayor, right? <laughs> Get the lyrics from the bathroom as well. <laughs> yeah. And the um, for this album making, did you actually had a chance to do uh, collaboration with other artists? I did. I had some great collaborators. Um, Renz, uh, Renz from LA, R-E-N-C-E. -E. Another man called Charlie Kurata produced it. Charlie is living in Paris and he's the world's tallest producer, like literally the tallest. Um, James Reed from Philippines, Olivia Knox and Saint Kit from LA, and a good friend of mine called Lou, L E W, from Singapore. So that's the writing team uh, that was part of this album. And um, you've mentioned about the inspiration, but we want to talk about the sets in the Gloomy Boogie Volume 1. Apart from other recent releases in the music industry, which both in Singapore that goes globally. So can you tell us about that set? Um, yes, yeah, so I think I love a lot of kinds of music. Um, I, I grew up with a lot of 
you know, I grew up with pop, with musical theatre, with rock, with uh, hip hop, R and B, like everybody. But um, I think this this album, there's a lot of genres, a lot of styles, even within one release of four songs. If you hear the album. Um, there's going to be a lot of different kinds of music and styles, and I think when the second part comes out, it's going to be even more different. There's going to be a lot more styles involved um, that my team and I are talking about. Maybe too many, so we're trying to narrow that down. But I think that's just really fun because um, I love so many genres of music, and to me, it didn't make sense to just do one in an album. I know people do that. Oh, it's just a pop record, just a rock record. But for me, I just wanted to. To put all my feelings into it、um, and different different styles. So if you like it, you like maybe one or two. You know, you don't hate the whole thing. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Well, fingers crossed on that as well.、Uh, and as a musician making career in the career, let's say, what's your strategy to promote this、um, music through、uh, digital? My strategy,、um, just dance covers, just lots of. TikTok dances everywhere. Dance, 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 dance to sad songs, slow songs. I'm kidding. I'm I'm so kidding, because I'm I'm I I couldn't do that. I'm honestly super shy.、Uh, I I I don't have that skill. I have a I have a bit of dancing experience, but not enough.、Um, but yeah, I think being a being a musician today in 2023 is so hard. You can't just write the song. You have to. Go viral on TikTok and Instagram. You have to create a trend. You have to have a viral song. And the biggest, toughest thing is, I think, being sincere and being real when you're doing all that. Because if you go, oh, I've got to do ten Instagram reels or ten TikToks, you know, then the song feels very different now for you.、Um, so I think my strategy is to still be very real, even while I'm doing TikTok dances or whatever I'm doing. You know, is to try and be real. Yeah. All right, so that's a strategy: doing TikTok dances and everything.、Um, I'm assuming that you're just—you're not really that shy, you know that, right? <laughs> All right, and maybe later there will be a tour in Indonesia. Hey, yeah, I love I love Indonesia, man.、Um, I got to go a few times this year and last year. And、um, back when I was in a band, we used to tour Indonesia a lot, and I really miss it.、Um, so, please invite me back, please. Okay. And、um, me, how much do you know about Indonesia? Since you you just mentioned that you've been to Indonesia, so how much do you know Indonesia? I know about the food. I I eat nonstop while I'm there. All my bakso, my martabak.、Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm always lapar banget. I'm always hungry.、Um, I'm always down to eat.、Um, and I, I, I know mostly the touristy spots. I'm waiting for someone to show me、um, all the cool, exciting、uh, new spots that I don't know of. But yeah, I, I, I love it very, very much. Yeah. All right. And we want to talk about similarities again. And like,、um, you know. What do you think the similarities between these listeners in Singapore and listeners in Indonesia about the songs and you know music? Good question. I don't know about listeners, but I know how they are when they are at concerts. Because I remember being at Indonesian concerts, and let me show you. Okay, so Singaporeans. Okay, so Indonesians when they're at the concert, they dance like this. They're like, yeah, they do that, that, you know, they dance and they party. This is this is Singaporeans at a concert. Like they they <laughs> they just stand there and then they fold their arms and they do this and then they might they might if you're good they might nod their head and give you this face like that's it that's all you're gonna get from Singaporeans、uh, I'm I'm not all Singaporeans but a lot of Singaporeans so、um, going to Indonesia and seeing people party you know and then have choreography and dance it's like it's so good、um, please teach Singaporeans how to have fun <laughs> well you just have to enjoy right. <laughs> Again,、yeah. Singaporeans don't kill me. I'm not saying all Singaporeans. I'm saying some Singaporeans. <laughs> well, that's that's very much highlighted. Okay, that's like the you're gonna be like in bold, italic, and every every kind of foreign, you know. <laughs> saying all Singaporeans, <laughs> but but they love folding their arms and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, and is there like、um, is that what you had during your、um, concert previously in Indonesia? You know, like that's actually in your memory. Um. 
One of my favorite memories was playing We The Fest, uh, I think in 2018 or 19, 2018, with my band. And uh, just so much support and love from people. I didn't, we didn't expect it at all, we, but we managed to, to have a good crowd and people knew our songs, knew our lyrics and they sang along. And that was crazy, yeah. And maybe later when you had an um, opportunity to go to Indonesia or, or maybe um, the m Indonesian musician goes to Singapore to do collabs. Who do you want to have a collab with? Oh man, so many. Um, right now, Teddy Atitia, Aziz Hedra. Um, I love, obviously I've been such a big fan of Afghan for so many years. Isyana and especially her new stuff. Her new stuff is so, so good. I've always been a massive, massive GAC fan, Gache. Um, we hung out quite a bit and we had a song together before, but every time they do something, I'm I'm just, my jaw is on the floor. I'm like, it's incredible what they do. Um, yeah, uh, Vidi, Vidi is amazing. I know he's coming back with new music as well. Um, I could go on forever. You have to stop me, Reski. This is dangerous. Uh, but they're all so talented. Yeah, everyone I've named, and more. I bet like a lot of um, singers that you want to be collabing with, right? Since... Yeah, Put me in a room with them. Just let me be in the corner and like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, maybe that, that's going to happen, right? In the future. We never know, right? <laughs> Crossed, yes. <laughs> okay. And also, you, before this, you go on a uh, solo career. You, you were in the band, right? And can Crossed. you tell us what's the difference between, you know, um, in the band, also having your own solo career. What's the difference for you? I was in a band of four people. So it was four of us all together, two guys, two girls. And um, everything was four times as slow. So this interview would take four times longer. Uh, making decisions would take four times longer. <laughs> Getting ready in the morning would take sometimes eight times longer. But I think it, sometimes it was four times as fun, you know? And I, I love I love being on stage with friends. I love playing music with friends. And there are times when I'm alone performing and I look to my left and right and I'll be, I miss this. I miss, I miss sharing music with people. Um, so yeah, whether it's, you know, like my band was or watching Gay Ache do their thing, it's always so beautiful to see friends doing music together. That's one of the best things in life. So I do miss that. Those are the big differences, yeah. All right, uh, that's the difference between having solo career and also the uh, having a band right but do you yes. miss them i i don't really because one of them is my sister and i see her every week um, <laughs> um, i stalk the rest all the time so yeah i do miss them a bit um but they're all in different places in life and um they're doing really well and i wish them all the best who knows but uh, we're all in different places now yeah that's really good that's really good Okay, and last but not least, we want to hear a song from you with this uh, new album, Gloomy Boogie, Volume 1. Of course, we want to hear a song. Could you please uh, sing a song for us, for the Southeast Asia uh, uh, See Today viewers? Reski, you're asking me to do this as I just woke up, so it's not going to be great. Um, it's and to premiere in Southeast Asia. Um, but okay, so the chorus of... Uh, the song that I wrote in the toilet. <laughs> it goes like this. So it goes, um, it goes, Don't worry, I just need a break. Break from the party. Don't try to find me. I'll be okay, don't worry. I just need a break. Break from the party. Don't try to call me, cause I'm okay. Oh, I just need a break. Oh, 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 I just need a break. Sorry, I just woke up, so my voice is like, wow. But... Oh, that was so good. That was so good. I can't believe that I, I'm gonna hearing this a lot, this life. Actually, before this interview, uh, I already uh, hear your song in the Spotify, and I put it on my like playlist <laughs> already. <laughs> Thank you, man. That's, That's so really good. Because, like, it's like you know. Um, Sometimes, not not every party is your party, right? You just want to get a break of it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. You got it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Benjamin Kang. Uh, he was very. He was very actually. Touchy as well, and also very. Um, 
we can hear the excitement yet it's not excitement yet it is uh, very relatable to what we have during that yeah, and right? thank you you look you look so good in the in the suit and shirt you matched your colors today thank you very much <laughs> thank you very much we're both in blue but i feel like i'm underdressed compared to you you look great thank you for wearing a suit <laughs> Thank you very much, Benjamin. Thank you. That's such a great day, guys. Well, it's a blue day, right? <laughs> it's a blue day. Give <laughs> me boogie. Give <laughs> me boogie. Okay. Thank you very much, Benjamin. So, um, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm. Uh, hopefully, we will able to see you in Indonesia, and we will, we will have you know more to talk about. Maybe you, you go here to the studio and perform to us live. Right? I just want to eat martabak. Just get me a big box of martabak and I'll be happy. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Oh, maybe if there is a closing, um, you know, words from you to our fans, to, you know, to our viewers. Ooh, good one. Um, thank you for, for the support. Um, the album is out, Gloomy Boogie. You can go check it out. Um, remember to stay healthy fix your posture, drink water, and uh, do small things with big love. That's why I would say, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Benjamin Kang. But, you know, we would like to do the closing with your singing. All right. <laughs> one more song, maybe the, uh, you know, maybe you can sing one more time for this closing. Oh, one more song. One what more. song should I do? Is it a different one? Uh, different one should be good. <laughs> ah, it's... Okay, the single was called Rock Bottom Blues. That's it. Uh, so the chorus goes like, one, two, three. Ooh, now I'm stuck singing Rock Bottom Blues. Yeah. I wish that I was better for you, but I can't. It's too easy, too easy to fall right down again. And, and. <laughs> good morning. I'm trying to wake up, uh, but that was the that was so good. That was so good. That was a rock bottom blue and also break, uh, break the party, right? From the, uh, from the album from Benjamin Kang himself all right uh thank you very much benjamin kang for having time with uh see today with me and also the crew and we hope that we're gonna see you each other in the future maybe here in indonesia or maybe we go to singapore all right yes see you benjamin. Uh, thank you so much bye 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 thank you so much benjamin kang for having time with uh see today for the interview really enjoy having you and we wish you a very good luck for your new album and maybe you can come to Indonesia in the future too especially here to the uh, see today office bye bye